Welcome to Gaia's Grow School. We're gonna grow an arbor today. We're gonna make an arbor out of natural materials and salvaged barn wood. Um, what we have here is some willow that we've harvested from around the farm. We have a bunch of willow that uh, we've cut down that was dead. And instead of hauling it off to the garbage, we are gonna actually do something with it. We also have old barn wood that we salvaged from another farm and we're going to add to that with our own farm pieces around the farm. So it's very unique and it's all natural and, and free. Free is a good thing. So I'm going to show you step by step how the best way that we figured out to do this here at Gaia's Farm and Gardens. And we just kind of do it the artistic way. It doesn't have to be perfect is not that objective here. We're just really doing it with an eye of art and also with what nature it would look like. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And it you can add to it and you can take away and it's a really fun project to do with your family. But the tools that we need are pruning shears, for the bigger sticks and then you need a pair of wire cutters because you're going to want to get some wire thin gauge wire if you can find brown that would be better because that would blend better and we also use twine and that blends very well and when you grow your flowers and your um, plants and vines all over it. You won't even see any of this anyway. And the um, vines will help it support, secure it and support it. So, first of all, with the larger branches, I'm gonna use wire and then I'll use string. So here's a nice curvy one. And so I'm gonna See how it bends over? So it'll bend over the arbor. So I'm gonna take a bunch of these and I'm gonna take some new, newer growth. It's not as old, but it broke off. Some of it's still green and it's more bendable. And if you wet this stuff, it, 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 it bends even more. So you can soak it in, it, 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 in, in water and it, it'll bend more and then dry out however you want to shape it. But this is all native to Colorado and probably a lot of other places. Willow is a wonderful thing to have. These are willow shrubs. So what, I'm gonna take an old one and then I'm gonna put in a new one. And what I do is I'm kind of trying to just Fill in the holes, the missing holes. And you kind of weave it back and forth. You don't want to go one way like these branches here. You're going to want to have that there. And then the next one, we'll take over here. And we'll go this way. So there's a it has the, the smaller branches on both sides so it looks like nature would have it and you can cut off any like broken ones that you don't want to use that are in the way like that this one I like these young ones. Because they're really bendable. If you can see, they're really... Like, they like to... You can twist them. The older ones, they're kind of fine pieces that are already bent. And if you don't have it on your farm or in, you know around you, you can also 
Um, ask somebody who is getting rid of, you know, doing has some on their property or out in nature and that's dead. Um, if it's already dead, it's not like you're taking anything. If it's in a park or you're just reusing branches, dead branches. And I never thought of this stuff until I was forced into it. I studied permaculture, but I'm very experiential. And when I experience having to pay to have people come pick up my stuff, I don't know if that's called cheap or what it's called, but I don't like that. So I'm like, what can I do with my stuff? And then I don't want to go to Home Depot and spend all that money. Um, and I don't want to pay to have my refuge thrown, you know, waste. Because I think it would cost a hundred more. And I don't have a chipper. So I thought, what can I do with it? And it just came to me. Well, yeah, it's, and it's very artistic and it goes with permaculture. And then it's all free and you're recycling. And that's the beauty about it. And it's unique, because you can buy a pergola, or have someone put it up, but this one's handmade. So you just kind of make the arch. I'm going to put this old one in. And I would set up a table like this so you don't have to bend over and hurt your back, because this is one thing that... I can do and I'm, I'm not hurting my, my back. You know, I'm just straight up and using good body mechanics. I think we'll go like this, with this one. But especially with kids, kids love this project. Something you can also do alone. See, I'm gonna clip some of this off. I want to just throw them inside. And always make a, a slant cut because nature never cuts straight. There's always a slant on a broken branch. And if you want to try to make it look natural, you want it to blend. So, and you can put this on an archway over your door at your house make one maybe from your entrance to your your farm or ranch you can find wood and make it out here um i don't think that's long enough i'm gonna put that one out here natural building materials are in vogue because we're out west and that's all i used in the past and it's uh it's very authentic. Okay, I'm gonna grab. So you step back and you look at it like you would art. And don't be a perfectionist and don't be an over tenant if you are an artist because I know how that goes. I'll I'll be here all day long. Because it's not perfect and I'll be messing with it. But as farming goes, you have to learn that lesson really fast. Don't be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. Perfect is not the goal. Oh, and then it can fall over. You may be mad, but that's not going to happen today. Okay, so I'm going to take this one, and I think we need a little more. A lot of florists like to use like willow and corkscrew willow for their arrangements. You can always sell that to florists, especially corkscrew willow is that, the, the round stuff. And that adds a good interest if you have that kind of tree. I have one of those, I haven't used it yet, but this is just willow that you see near um, water. It loves water. Also willow, they used to make brooms out of it. And um, if you cut a piece of live willow, you can make a rooting hormone out of it. It's a very versatile plant to um, take cuttings and you know, root plants. It uh, has 
cute auxins in it. So a live one, you, they used to use that as a rooting hormone in, back in the Native American days and uh, root their crops. So I think I got a pretty good one here. So I'm gonna take two, this full wire and I'm gonna go underneath it. And I'm gonna put about three, three or four of the wire ones. So I'm gonna use my wire clippers and I wanna do it pretty snugly. You want these to be pretty sturdy. So I'm gonna there we go. And then you just twist it together like that. And you can cut these off, these end pieces if you want. You don't need so much, but when you grow your roses and your vines over it, you won't even see it. If you'd like, you can spray paint it. You know, I say get brown if they have brown. So yeah, and I'm going to put one in the middle because that's really, really needs to be snug. Oh, not that one. It's always good to have a helper, then you can have someone like, if you need, you know, they can push it down for you while you. It's looking good. I think I gotta kind of make a little bit of a curve here. Okay. And I tried putting them just up individually and that didn't work because the first snowstorm, it broke it all. So that didn't work. First in instinct is usually the right one. I would do it on a, in the morning when it's real peaceful. It's not too hot. So about three pieces and it's held together pretty good. And then I'm gonna come with the twine. <coughs> and I'm just gonna go around in between the places that have some branches that are smaller. And I'm gonna tie off over here. You don't wanna tie it too tight or it'll break. You just kinda of wanna make sure it's down. So it just holds it together. And then I just kind of wrap it around anywhere where I want it to be more snug. And then I'm going to tie it off here. And then I'm going to cut. 
And as you see, that kind of tightens uh, the ending up. And then you can kind of snip off the excess. Doing that slant cut. And if there's a few pieces sticking out, that's okay. It gives a character. So you can put them in. Just remember it, doesn't it? You know, just a natural look, the best look. So, in between these metal pieces, I'm gonna put a Just loop it along. Tie it off. And I'm going to go on the ends. And I'm going to finish it off by. Tightening these up, tie off. What is that saying, Helgrit? Out of necessity comes genius. Yep. Yeah, that's what's been my situation <laughs> a lot, a lot of times. Yes, for sure. But I'm so grateful for that awareness because mm -hmm. it was my consciousness that wasn't as evolved at the time. Where I'm thinking, oh my God, I have to have all this money for the arbor and blah blah blah. If you have a dream, there's always a way to do it. Well, if there's a will, there's a way. And also, it started to make sense, and I learned much more about, you know, permaculture, and I experienced it. And that, that's, you know, that's the best kind of learning, is it's, you know, you're experiencing it. And, and then you have, you know, you can use your money for other things. But if you don't have the resources to go to Home Depot and you want a beautiful arbor, it's it's right there. And that's where the principle I talk about with the earth is abundant. You know, um, I never realized that till I lost everything. And then I looked around like, what can I use? And it was that lack that taught me about the abundance. And then now I have such gratitude because even as a child, I wanted to do this with you know, s sticks and and everything, and I feel more, it's more fun, it's more earthy, it grounds you, and it's just dead trees go with living trees, and then it's all beautiful, and no trees got harmed in the process, so I don't need a redwood, you know, cut down from my deck, and any tree can work, and you can use all sorts of things you find if you're on a drive if you have a truck if you see like a curved uh broken down branch get out and get it you gotta be careful you can get finger burns from the rope that's the only hazard or poke an eye out but you know i haven't yet so if i haven't you won't Okay, I might have to tie a little bit over here, and that's it. Are you getting some shade there? Okay, here we go. This is it. Now we're going to put it on top of the arbor. Right up here. So you'll need a ladder and you'll probably need a friend. Okay. 
And now we're going to secure it to the, ar the arbor and find a good place and let it make sure that it's even and let it rest. I'm gonna put another piece over here that's more of a, a branch so it'll be a bit behind this so I'm not completely finished. And it will hold it. I'm gonna screw a branch in here when I find the perfect one. And then from then I'll, I'll bundle up and I'll keep going down the rows with each bundle until it's all done. So that's how you do that. And it makes a, be in a beautiful archway. And then all of the flowers that you grow, the roses, the vines, and they'll grow up into this. And grapes will dangle from that. You could use clematis. Uh, heirloom roses are really wonderful out in Colorado. Sierra's throwing a fit. Come here, Sierra. Stop throwing a fit. She's scratching her butt. <laughs> oh, Sierra! So I, just, I have a hard time not laughing and shaking because it's just... <laughs> is she stuck? Oh, is she stuck? Oh. Are you stuck, girlfriend? She gets herself stuck in the chair. Old lady, you are getting senile. <laughs> talk to you about working with natural building materials in local building materials and making a garden fence. Now we get um, our lumber from a local sawmill 
and we get some of the scraps and then we get there's higher grades or just different grades but we get a lot of the beetle kill uh, we had a bunch of uh, we had a really bad problem in Colorado they killed a lot of trees so what they did is they're trying to reuse it the beetle kill and they had to cut down a lot of trees and a lot of trees died so um, this is recycling that waste which is good and it's very artistic and I find it to be really natural and blend with a garden design really well so um, right here this is so far the garden fence we've been started and sometimes you'll get uh, pieces that have been sprayed marked you know what bundle they are or odd pieces that don't have any bark on them I love the bark look, and, and again, this doesn't have to be perfect either. That's the beauty of it. It's like a little puzzle. You just put them together. Um, you can screw them in and then come over and, and put bark over it, um, or you can nail them in. But you just use two by fours and some posts. Um, this is some of the wood. Now this is, and you would cut it square for your fence, however high you would like it. But see, you see the small holes in there? That's the beetle kill. And then this is the other side. And it makes for a really nice smell and a really nice texture. So like horticulture therapy wise, if you're doing a horticulture therapy garden or a healing garden, blind people would really like to touch that, you know, and feel that. And it's visually appe appealing. So we would cut this down with a saw to our size that we want. And you can use one, um, you know, uh, one that you use as a template and then just cut along, you know, so you, it makes it faster and easier. And here's some other various pieces of the woods that we, we use around here for fencing. So we put the fence together, but there's some flaws in it. Sometimes we, we need to cover up certain uh, spots that might be on there. And then also some of the bark has fallen off some of these places. So what I figured, it's just like a craft project. So I, I got my trusty glue gun here. And you'll probably need a couple glue things. So put it in your pocket and you bring some nails and a hammer and you pick up some pieces of um, the, the, the bark that have fallen off and then you can glue them on to cover up spots and you can put in a little, these are the little finishing nails that you get, you know, to hang pictures. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But um, we're going to go over here and we're going to take our glue gun and we're going to take our our pruners because we can cut little areas if we need to so this is how I just make it decorative so right here we got this blue sp spray paint and I don't like how that looks because it just stands out too much for me so I had to figure out what I was going to do about that put the glue onto the tree itself well you want to make sure it's covered up I need I might need a few pieces to do this and you just hold it there and you push it in. There's holes in this from the beetles, which is perfect, so you can... And with the glue, you probably only need one. You want it to look natural, not stand out. It's like a puzzle. Fit it all in. Yeah, that'll be good enough. 
You can use little pieces or big pieces, whatever you you know has fallen off, and to, you put it back on. Now, if you get the uh, quality one, it's more expensive than the. There's different types of this kind of fencing, and um, so if you don't want any of this, you can you can get it without any of this, but. Just put a little more glue. See, I already need another. And then you can go back and you put, kind of just put the glue in there so it, in the holes, so it sticks. And you'll, you'll feel yourself, you know, out and you'll feel around and get the hang of it. It takes a little practice. You're just putting basically bark back on the tree that's fallen off. See, there's a screw hole right there. You don't want that. So just take a piece and, and then you come along and you know it. After you've cut it, we, we did a chainsaw with this, so we come and we just... We're cutting it off to make it look nice. But this will keep the goats out because they keep eating my flowers and that makes me mad. So um, we had to do something. And it's all recycled, all recycled material and it's all, you know, sustainable. So and it goes right with our, you know, atmosphere, the mountains. And it comes from the mountains. So very Colorado. So thanks for watching.